This week is the 75th anniversary of atomic bombs being dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Can nuclear weapons be used under international law? Let's find out. World War II was coming to an end in Europe in the middle of 1945 with the defeat of Nazi Germany, but it continued to rage in the Pacific theater. And in August of 1945, the United States dropped two atomic bombs, first on Hiroshima and then a few days later on Nagasaki. There remains ongoing controversy today about nuclear weapons. There are several states in the world that possess nuclear weapons, there is also continuing concern about the number of nuclear weapons in the world. At one point in the mid-1980s, they stood at around 70,000. At the moment, there are around 14,000 nuclear weapons in the world, over 90% of which belong to the United States and Russia. Of course, as many of you are aware, there have been attempts to regulate the possession, the development, of nuclear weapons in international law. What I want to do though is focus on a particular question concerning whether nuclear weapons can be used under international law. And I'm thinking in particular about a case where an armed conflict has already broken out involving two or more states. And the question is whether one of the sides can use nuclear weapons against the other. And that parallels to some degree what happened in World War II. There was an armed conflict already in play and the United States decided to use nuclear weapons against Japan in 1945. If an armed conflict emerges between two states, international law has something to say about the conduct, the behavior of the warring parties, the different sides, regarding the weapons that may be used, how they may be used, uh, regarding protection of civilian life, regarding protection of the natural environment, and so on. The basic problem seems to be this. Nuclear weapons are weapons of mass destruction. They cause large-scale destruction. They are not very discriminatory. And that doesn't seem to sit very well with the international law that applies during an armed conflict, where, as I say, the rules, the legal rules, require the warring parties to distinguish between lawful military objectives, for instance, and civilian areas, which would need to be protected. If one of the parties decides to drop a thermonuclear device during the armed conflict, this is likely to be indiscriminate in terms of the destruction that is caused, and it's likely to have an appalling cost in terms of civilian life. This presents a bit of a puzzle. Certain states are spending very large sums of money developing and maintaining a nuclear arsenal, and yet it may be that these weapons can't really be used during an armed conflict. In fact, this issue came before an international court, the International Court of Justice, which sits in The Hague. The UN General Assembly had asked the International Court of Justice whether the use of nuclear weapons was permitted in any circumstance under international law. In a nutshell, the court held that the use of nuclear weapons would generally be unlawful, but that was the general position. The court didn't want to say that the use of nuclear weapons would be unlawful in any conceivable circumstance. That position that the court took attracted a lot of controversy. Within the court itself, the judges were split and also among states as well as observers. Critics of the court didn't hold back. They regarded the court judgment as a typical lawyer's compromise. The court taking a general position, we think that the use of nuclear weapons is generally unlawful, but you know there may be some circumstances, some exceptional circumstances that exist perhaps we don't quite know, we're going to sit on the fence, we're going to hedge our bets a little bit. This sort of position was infuriating to some observers. For other observers, they had a more charitable view of the court. They thought that the court was grappling with a difficult question, and actually it just may be a complicated answer to that question. It might require some nuance. To give you a sense of some of the challenges here, one question that came up related to the potential use of tactical nuclear weapons tactical nuclear weapons are more limited. 
they're typically used on a battlefield. They're contrasted with strategic nuclear weapons. Those are the large-scale nuclear weapons that can be used to destroy entire cities or regions. Tactical nuclear weapons, more limited to battlefield scenarios, and the damage is more limited, although they're still, of course, nuclear weapons. And so the question that arose here was whether tactical nuclear weapons could perhaps be used in certain circumstances and in a way that wasn't indiscriminate maybe tactical nuclear weapons could be used on a battlefield in relation to isolated military targets and there wouldn't be any threat to civilian life, the damage would be more limited. One of the judges on the court, who was of American background, toyed with this idea and he talked about, for instance, a state deciding to use a nuclear depth charge to attack a nuclear submarine that was about to fire or maybe had fired its own nuclear missiles. The idea here might be that a conventional weapon wouldn't work. Equally, there wouldn't be any immediate civilian casualties because the nuclear submarine is in the middle of the sea. Uh, the environmental damage might be more limited. So these sorts of considerations gave this judge a reason to pause and think whether nuclear weapons might be used tactically in certain situations without being contrary to international law. Others are not persuaded, however. One of the rules that applies during an armed conflict is that the warring parties should avoid causing unnecessary suffering. And the idea would be that even if you were to use a limited tactical nuclear weapon, even in this scenario of a nuclear submarine in the middle of the sea, well, there could be unnecessary suffering caused as a result of this that wouldn't be the case with the use of other sorts of weapons. And that's because of the nature of nuclear weapons and the damage that they inflict, including the radiation and the long-term effects of that. So there is an ongoing debate about this, whether the use of nuclear weapons as a matter of present day international law would be lawful. It seems to be that nuclear weapons cannot generally be used. The questions that arise seem to center on possible exceptions. Are there any exceptions where nuclear weapons could be used in a way that isn't too indiscriminate? Now, just to bring this full circle and back to the atomic bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, there is an interesting question as to whether the actions by the United States in 1945 were contrary to international law as it stood then. There is an argument to say that the US violated international law at the time. There is a treaty from 1907 called the Hague Convention, and it concerns the behavior of warring parties during an armed conflict. According to this 1907 treaty, it is especially forbidden to use weapons that are calculated to cause unnecessary suffering. And the argument is that nuclear weapons, the atomic bomb, was just that, a weapon calculated to cause unnecessary suffering. As is well known, and it's a matter of public record, the US military, when choosing targets for the atomic bomb, selected certain targets based on, among other things, the amount of damage that it would do and the psychological impact of this on Japan and also internationally, including the Soviet Union. And so there's potentially an argument to be made here that decisions taken were calculated to cause unnecessary suffering, contrary to the 1907 treaty. The debate about nuclear weapons is a long-running one and a very controversial one too. It's an emotive debate and raises passions on all sides. I have focused on a particular question about the use of nuclear weapons during an armed conflict and what international law might have to say about that. But there are lots of other questions as well. Questions relating to the maintenance of nuclear weapons, the development of nuclear weapons, the extent to which nuclear weapons, the number of them should be minimized over time, continue to be minimized and perhaps abolished entirely. So all of these are questions for policymakers and lawyers moving forward. That's about it from me. Thank you for watching and see you next time.